Hello, it's Burgess Taylor, and it is week six check-in of the Artist Way. I just wanted to talk a minute about what I have going on and what week six is about. Week six is about recovering a sense of abundance. She talks about money quite a bit in here. She talks about luxuries, little things, big things, our idea of it. The introduction to week six says, this week you tackle a major creative block, money. You are asked to really look at your own ideas around God, money, and creative abundance. The essays will explore the ways in which your attitudes limit abundance and luxury in your current life. I don't have another life. You'll be introduced to counting, a blockbusting tool for clarity and the right use of funds. This week may feel volatile. So she starts out with talking about how um, some of us want um, a God that feels like a fat paycheck and a license to spend as we please. That listening to the siren song of more, we are deaf to the still small voice waiting in our soul to whisper, you're enough. One of the statements that kind of rang true was, I have to keep a roof over my head, we say. Nobody's going to pay me to be creative. Well, that's actually not true. There are a lot of people who get paid to be creative. Many of us equate difficulty with virtue and art with fooling around. Hard work is good. A terrible job must be building our moral fiber. Something like a talent for painting, say, that comes to us easily and seems compatible with us must be some sort of cheap trick not to be taken seriously. She uses the word frivolous in this chapter, talking about like art and creative pursuits, and that is, there goes that word. She says, what we really want to do is what we are really meant to do. When we do what we are meant to do, money comes to us, doors open for us, we'll feel useful, and the work we do feels like play to us. That I definitely agree with. Then she talks about luxury, how just a little authentic luxury can go a long way and that your view of what is authentic and the luxuries might differ from other people's. For some people, a luxury might be buying fresh raspberries every week or getting the deluxe Crayola mark, um, crayon set or buying music every week like an album or a CD. Time is also a luxury. She says in order to thrive as artists, and one could argue as people, we need to be available to the universal flow. When we put a stopper on our capacity for joy by anoretically declining the small gifts of life, we turn aside the larger gifts as well. She talks about like what gives us true joy, and that was then that's when she starts talking about the lady whose idea of a luxury is like fresh raspberries. For many blocked creative, it takes a little work to even imagine ourselves having luxury, that luxury is a learned practice for most of us, that blocked creatives are often the Cinderella's of the world, focused on others at the expense of ourselves. We even be threatened by the idea of spoiling ourselves for once. She says that luxury is actually a very often a shift in consciousness more than flow, that although as we acknowledge and invite what feels luxurious to us, we may indeed trigger an increased flow. That creative living requires the luxury of time, which we carve out for ourselves, even if it's 15 minutes for quick morning pages and a 10-minute mini bath after work. Creative living requires the luxury of space for ourselves. Designating a few things that are special and yours alone can go a long way to making that you, you feel pampered. And she goes into this counting exercise about money madness. People with money are money equals if I had money I'd then there are the tasks I did quite a few of the tasks actually one of them was to number three clearing throw out or give away five ratty pieces of clothing I did beyond that I filled a large lawn black garbage bag full of clothes to throw away and a whole nother bag to donate I did that bake something that was number four I did that too Number eight, clearing any new changes to your home environment. I did that. I've been doing some organizing and some cleaning. Acceptance, any new flow in your life. Practicing yes to freebies. Thought about that one, and time has to do with that. And I was offered some help to do something, and I took them up on it. Now, as far as the check-in goes, 
How many days this week did you do your morning pages? Five out of seven. How was the experience for you? There are some days when writing three pages is just a little bit much and I end up writing more or less two pages. Did you do your artist date this week? Did you do and how did it feel and have you allowed yourself to? Most weeks I do a mini artist date and then a big artist date. This week I did an artist date with my daughter. We went on a mother-daughter date. At uh, first we were going to do something artistic, but we ended up not doing anything artistic. We just kind of ended up more or less going out to eat and doing some shopping and spending some time together. And then I enjoyed it and it gave me a big sense of relief and enjoyment. And I am ready to do it again next week. Did you experience any synchronicity this week? As a matter of fact, synchronicity has been actually kind of building up a little in different areas. When I talked to my daughter and I talked to my husband about different things, uh, there were comments that were made that to me were actually part of this whole synchronicity thing. Like I said in the last video, I'm trying to take the YouTube channel up, an, up a notch or two or three. And then I'm going to be post, posting on my blog a lot more often. February was pretty sucky, one blog post. But February on a whole was pretty sucky. Synchronicity. When I was talking to my daughter and my husband different times, they both brought up that I was a lot more talented than I give myself credit for, that I really should, you know, think about keeping on the the road, the path towards doing something with this creativity, with my talents, not just writing, but with the art and things like that. And my daughter was like, well, you know, mom, you could actually, would love to be able to do that. But I, I thought about what would be something that I could do like on a consistent basis that after a while I wouldn't hate, like making the flowers that wouldn't work because that would just be something that after a while I would actually hate doing. And then I thought about other things. Well, what I've actually been giving quite a bit of thought to is thinking about not worrying so much about like making money, but definitely thinking about how I could touch and inspire and motivate other people a little bit more about how I could kind of get the ball rolling with the YouTube channel, having better content, having better titles, better tags, um, reaching out to more people in a better way, I think. And I want to do a little bit of vlog style writing videos where I have some clips of writing and what I'm doing when I'm writing. And that's going to take a little bit of reorganization around here so I can fit the tripod with the camera so that you can actually see me writing. And different things like what works for me, what doesn't work for me, maybe taking a few classes, maybe taking, maybe going to a writer's conference, um, some workshops, even with the art too, like maybe taking Jay Davenport's workshop or different things I've thought about, sketch school, stuff like that. There are some things that I want to eventually put into the works and work on doing. Right now I need to get to the point where I can better edit the videos and to do that I have to learn how to and that's yeah, a bit of a learning curve here. But there have been like things over and over again that keep telling me that this is the route that I need to take. I've been kind of lazy with the editing of the videos, learning some kind of editing software because Movie Maker, I finally got it down and now I'm like, okay, now I'm supposed to learn something new all over and they're very different because I've taught, I've tried a few um, of the editing softwares, did their trial version and after trying like three or four times, trying to figure out how to edit a video, watching their help videos and stuff like that and I'm looking at it, it's like so complicated. I'm just like, forget it. It needs to be user friendly. It really does need to be user friendly. And yeah, so the one that has, the two that made the most sense to me was Corel's and then Cyberlinks. And so I chose Cyberlinks because that was the ultimate was already on my laptop. I just hadn't used it. And then I had the basic Cyberlink, the free one on my desktop but I went ahead and upgraded it to the same one, the ultimate that's on my desktop so that they'll be the same and I can, you know, use them on either one. I'm not learning two different editing softwares. I can tell you that right now. 
that's what I've been doing is trying to figure out like how I can expand things, how I can do things better, not just with with my draw, my actual drawing or my actual art of being pulled to do more, to reach out to more people and with the blog and with the videos. And I think people keep telling me, people are leaving me messages and telling me how inspiring my, my pages are, my journal pages or my creativity or how the fact that even when I have a really hard time, like I did in January, the beginning of January in December and like the month February, that I'm not giving up, that I haven't quit, that I'm still trying and I'm still learning, trying to do better and things like that. And I think it's really important. And each time I read one of those messages or somebody makes like a suggestion or a comment or compliment, I'm reminded that this is important, that I'm not just wasting my time or my breath doing these. And, you know, I don't, because in a way, when I first started doing these, I start, started for NaNoWriMo. And then I was not going to do any more videos until it was time to get ready for NaNoWriMo again. So it kind of would have been a NaNoWriMo seasonal thing. But then people were like, no, do more videos because I'm not just writing during NaNoWriMo stuff. So I continue to make the videos. And since then, I've done some videos about journaling done some videos about books, done a few haul videos, and you know, each time I do like something different or whatever, I'm not quite so sure about it. When I very first started doing this, I felt a little vain, like I felt a little weird, like getting on the camera to begin with and, you know, editing videos and trying to look nice so you're on the video and making sure I don't have like, spinach in my teeth and things like that I was like, okay, but it's not about any of that. Um, it's not about how many times I say, um, it's not how many times I say like, or, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's about me being real. And I used to not edit videos. Really. I kind of did one take wonders. My original videos weren't really edited. I tried, it took me like five or six or seven times to make the video because I didn't know how to edit a video and I didn't have any intros. And I think it's getting to the point where I'm okay with editing videos, but I don't want to not be real either. So there, there has to be like a happy medium. I'm, um, not young. I'm in my early, like I'm not in my early twenties, late teens. Hell, I'm not even in my thirties. I'm in my late forties. I'm a grandmother, I have two grown kids and a stepdaughter who's almost grown. And I'm not perfect. I don't have perfect skin. I don't have perfect teeth. Although like the three or four thousand dollars that were spent on braces, they're pretty decent. I drink a hell of a lot of coffee. But <clears throat> sometimes my coffee doesn't have very much caffeine in it. But I'm all about being creative and I'm a bit of a hippie and I think that the more you open your mind and your spirit towards new things and the possibilities, the better off you are. And I think spiritually, and I'm not going to get into the whole religious factor or not, but spiritually my higher self, I have become a lot more in tuned with myself, my inner self, my higher self with this. And I think this has been such a great thing and it really has been such a great thing. I suggest that if you're interested in it remotely and you're creative and picking up the arts way and taking a read. I think the other thing is I'm going to do a blab this Wednesday. Haven't set a time yet. So if you're interested in doing a blab with me, only four of us can do it. Persephone made a mention about she wanted to do it. So I'm up for in the evening or during the day from noon until about 3.30. I have it open. And then in the evening, anytime past probably 8 o'clock, I just need to know so I can let my son know ahead of time. Because he plays games and if I upload videos or do something like that, it affects his gaming. And so I just need to know to let him know so he can schedule his gaming for a different time. But I'm definitely interested in doing a blab and talking about the artist way in general. This week the week 
of recovering abundance wasn't so much about like money, money for me. It was about allowing myself, learning to and being open to allowing myself small luxuries. One of the big luxuries for me, what she was talking about, is time. I'm always trying to get my writing done. Always trying to get my art done. I got no. I got to work on my project. No, I got to work on. I, gotta, I don't have time. You can't just work on your projects. You have to live life too. You have to stop and smell the roses, which is why Friday's artist day was so good for me. I don't get out of the house a whole lot. One, I'm more of an introvert than an extrovert, so socializing is a mood thing for me. Two, I am busy. Not only do I do housework and all the laundry and all that stuff, but one, being sick during the whole month of February, I have a ton of housework that I'm trying to catch up on. And another thing is, I don't do just the writing. I do art journaling stuff. I'm reading. I'm taking classes now. I'm trying to do things other than just, like, the writing. I'm also outlining for April's Camp NaNoWriMo and things like that. So to me, in the back of my head, I am busy and writing is my like job. So usually in the mornings from, let's say about eight o'clock in the morning till about four o'clock in the afternoon, 4.30, I'm busy writing. I take breaks during that time to eat lunch, to um, do some art journaling, and to check emails. Usually when I'm doing the art journaling, I'm watching YouTube videos, the ones that I can listen to and don't really have to watch. The ones that I have to watch, I do those at a different time. But So I'm multitasking. I can't watch YouTube videos while I'm writing. That wouldn't work. But I can do it while I'm art journaling, especially if somebody else is doing art journaling stuff or they're talking about it. I can do my art journaling with them while I'm doing it. It's kind of like where you're not quite so alone. When I make time out of my schedule to do something like an artist date or whatever, it's like taking a lunch or doing something like that where I take a break. And I, But I don't always allow myself to do breaks like that. What has been a big thing, even with the mini artist date, I make them short. So I thought, you know what, I need to do that at least once a week though, take time away. Friday I was gone for like three and a half, almost four hours. I was gone for a long time. That was a very long break, but I also did my grocery shopping and it made me realize how much I really needed that, how much I really did need it. So if you haven't already done an artist day where you actually take some time away, where you're not thinking about your art or you're not thinking about your writing, not thinking about your music or whatever it is that is your creative thing, take an artist day that gets you out of that, completely away from it and give yourself a break. Pamper yourself in some way, shape, or form. I think my next artist date is going to be outdoors somewhere, maybe a park or playground, or um, I might just go for a bicycle ride. I don't know, but I think I'm going to take my camera and get some footage of stuff like that and just kind of enjoy being outdoors now that the weather's kind of getting nicer. And I want to have another artist date with my daughter where either maybe we do some art or maybe we don't. I don't know, but I definitely want an artist date with my daughter again because I'm really enjoying that. We need that time together. And that was my week six. Like, really, it wasn't so much about money. I mean, I am very grateful for things. Last week was also the week where my husband fixed our washer. So the money that we spent fixing the lid switch was a whole lot better than spending a f fortune on the pump for the washer or having to get a new washer. I did also purchase, like I said, I purchased the camera for myself and the webcam. So those were things that are not just luxuries to me, but are hopefully going to be worth the investment because I'm investing in myself by trying to have better content and things like that, not just for YouTube, but for pictures and for video. I want to start doing more video of my grandson and different things like that. I mean, take pictures from our journal, all kinds of stuff. I really want just better, you know, better in general. Probably going to have a page on my blog about the art journaling and then a page about the writing. I'm thinking about separating it into different sections. So. I'm not quite sure. I haven't figured out how to do all that yet, but my mind is going like a different direction and I'm trying to 
get everything organized this year. Last year was supposed to be my get organized year. This actually is becoming the year that I am getting things truly organized because last year I tried a bunch of different methods and things didn't, didn't work. This year I've actually put together things that are really working based on what I learned from last year. And not only is this year becoming my year for positive change for positivity, but it's also becoming my year to make real changes and to get better organized and stuff. So a lot of this has to do with this and a lot of this has to do with trial and error from last year. Another little tiny luxury that I did was I bought a few magazines. I got Shape Magazine. This one says Sexy Abs in Seven Days, The Secret to Silky Shiny Hair, Get a Killer Butt, A Fun New Way to Firm. And Jamie Alexander, a blind spot. You'll love her 10-minute fat blasting workout. And she is absolutely gorgeous. So if she's got a 10-minute fat, blast, fat blasting workout, I'm all for 10 minutes worth of workout. Then Woman's World, there's coffee on this. Size 26 to size 4. Lori's Simple Cure for Overeating made her 125 pounds slimmer. Melt belly fat. Feel 40% less stressed. Clutter Whispers Tricks to Declutter Fast. I'm here. This one is real simple, life made easier. One small change diet, 15 simple steps to a leaner, healthier you. Live happily with a messy person. Master the 20 minute dinner and care for yourself while caring for others. Care for yourself while caring for others. In every single one of these magazines, there are actually some really good pictures and stuff that once I've read the articles, and I cut out some of the articles for my daughter to read. And then once I cut out the recipes, there are some excellent words and phrases, pictures and stuff like that, that I can use in my journals. So they definitely weren't a waste, but that was a little luxury for me because I rarely, rarely buy magazines. So that's been my week six of The Artist Way. Um, like I said, I did some luxurious stuff for myself. Um, I got, I ordered a camera, which will be in tomorrow. I got the new webcam and I got myself some magazines and my daughter and I went Friday and went out to eat and we did a tiny bit of shopping. I do that stuff very often. But my biggest luxury I would say is making my white chocolate mochas at home instead of buying them from Starbucks. I'll order their white chocolate sauce in the real big container which is like $20, $22. And that lasts me for about a month. So instead of buying four coffees in a week for $20, 20-something $20 dollars, I buy the one big container of sauce for the same amount of money, and that's good for like a whole month. And then the only time I ever get Starbucks is like maybe on Fridays, which is my artist date, but I didn't even get a Starbucks this past Friday. I just had my coffee at home and then went to dinner with my daughter. So if you're interested in doing the blab on Wednesday, give me a shout out. Let me know. If not, that's okay. Um, I, I might be doing it by myself. If I don't hear back from anybody by Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, then I'll just, I guess, schedule it a time for myself during the day on Wednesday when it's quiet around here. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.